Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how we can create a custom command. So let's start by going into our init package and creating a new class called command init. And this is going to have a private static final array list of something called base command, which we haven't created yet, and we can call this commands. And then let's set it equal to a new array list. And now we need to create our base command class. So in our common package, let's create another new package called dot commands. And in here, let's create a new class called base command. Then back in command init, we can import base command with control shift O. And there we go. In our base command, let's create a protected literal argument builder of command source and call it builder. And then let's create a boolean called enabled. Then let's create a constructor which takes a string name, an int permission level, and a boolean enabled. And then let's set this dot builder to commands dot literal of name. And we want to make sure to import the commands from net.minecraft.commands. And then we do dot requires, and then we can create a predicate, so source, and then we'll return source dot has permission level and then we'll pass in the permission level. And let's set this dot enabled to enabled. Then let's add get builder and is enabled. Then let's copy this get builder, paste it down here, change it to set execution and return null. And this is going to create an empty command. And in order to make a proper command, we can just extend this class. So now we can fill in command in it over here. Let's create a public static void called register commands. And this is going to take a final register commands event, event. Then let's create a command dispatcher of command source. And we can call this dispatcher. And it's going to be equal to event.getDispatcher. Then let's write commands.foreach. And then let's take the command. And then let's open a scope. And let's check if the command is enabled and command.setExecution doesn't equal to null. Then we can do dispatcher.registerCommand.getBuilder. Now let's actually create our commands. So in commands, we're going to create a new package called .impl. And in here, let's create an example command. And this example command is going to extend base command. And then we can hover over this and add a constructor. And then we can override set execution. So my command is just going to give an item to the player. And in here is where we're going to tell the game what our command looks like. My command is just going to give an item to the player. So let's do return builder dot then. Then we need to pass in the player to give the item to. So let's do commands dot argument. The argument name is going to be the player. And then the argument type is going to be entity argument dot player. So one player. And then we need to tell this command what it's going to do if it gets that player as an argument. So if it does, it's going to execute. And then we need to pass in a function for it to execute. So then let's create a private int called execute. And this is going to take a command source and then whatever thing that we passed in. So we passed in a player. So let's do a server player entity because commands are running the server and player. And in executes, we're going to take the source and then we're going to do execute with the source dot get source and then entity argument dot get player from the source and the name of the argument. So what we put here. So in this case, player. And in here, we're going to do player dot add item stack to inventory. And then let's create a new item stack of item init dot example item dot get. So now when we run this command, we're going to get our example item. Finally, let's return command dot single success to tell the game that the command's been executed successfully. And that's our simple command. Now let's register it in our command init. So under here, let's do commands dot add, and then we need our base command. So let's do a new example command. And here we put the name of the command. So slash, let's do give example item. 
Then the permission level, I'm going to set this to 4 so it can only be run by an operator. 0 means it can be run by everyone. And boolean enabled, yes, this command is enabled, so let's set it to true. And that will register our command. Now all we need to do is register our command in it, so we can do that in tutorial mod, where let's create a subscribe event over here called public static void on command register. And then let's do final register commands event, event, and then let's do commands in it dot register commands with the event. And I think the part that's hardest to understand here is this builder. So what happens here is the builder is the actual command so far, and we want to keep adding onto it. And the thing that's hardest here is to make sure that you've got your brackets correct. So the dot then means that we add something on to the command. So let's say if we do slash give example item, then we need to add on the argument for the player. So when we do then, we add on the argument inside those brackets. But then you can see that this bracket ends here. Why do we have the execute inside the dot then and not afterwards? Well, the execute will only happen if we put in a player as the command. If we put it outside the dot then, then, then we can either put in a player or just execute the command. And then it will error because it can't get that player because we haven't actually passed it in. So you want to make sure to have these in the correct order and have the brackets in the right places so that everything is run at the correct time. And you want to make sure that this method isn't static so that the game will launch. And you can see that when we run the game and try to run the slash give example item command, it wants us to pass in a player, but if we pass in all players, it doesn't work because we set it to be only one player. So let's do give example item at s. And when we run that, we get our example item. And obviously there's a lot more you can do with this command. Just make sure that you're running the then and execute in the right place, that these strings are the same so that you're getting the correct one. If you have two player arguments, then you want to make sure these are different for each argument. So I can set this to player one and player one, then add another argument and set it to be player two. We want to make sure to always take in the correct thing. If you have dot get players here and get players, then this needs to be a collection of server player entities. And that's going to do it for this tutorial. If you need any help, join the Discord and I'll see you next time.